Hi there, this is Mr. Weiss. So I'm just gonna now start this and whoever joins up, joins up. So we'll give people five or seven minutes to join up here and away we go. Super, somebody's joined me already. Let me know who you are. And I will take roll. I've got uh, Emil, you're in the wrong video. You've got to go to the other one that's with the seventh grade. This is an eighth grade one, so goodbye. Okay, waiting for my eighth grade to come on. So as soon as you come on eighth grade, let me know who I've got. I've got one or two of you, so go ahead and type in so I know you're there. And again, eighth grade chemistry. Hey, life is there. Good. All right, life. Well done. You're the first one. So I'm giving all participation points each live stream, including today. So life is here. Good. I got someone else joining us. Let's see who that is. I got two more people. So say hello, let me know you're here so I can see who you are as you join in. And I've got Emerson Games. You're gonna have to let me know who you are. Alessia, great. Gotcha. <laughs> Thank you, Alessia. Okay, let's hope we get a couple others. And once we get three or four of y'all start up. Oh, got it. I see. So just so you know, we're going to be doing chemistry today and reviewing some stuff on the periodic table. And we'll warm up once I get a few more here with a Bohr model. It looks like another person's joining us. Let's see who that is, or two more. So say hi when you're here so I know who you are. Elias, super. And I've got one or two more that are with us. Ethan is with us. Hi, Ethan. Hi, Leas. Um, while we're waiting for a couple others to join us, can you all go and get uh, either in your book or if you have a paper one, a periodic table? So I'm going to have one up here, and um, well, I'm going to refer to it quite a lot during the hour. So if you have one, you got a minute or two now to go get it out of your notes, or you can use one that's in your book. I think there's one in your book as well, if you look up periodic table, okay? And there's one at the back of your school planner. If you have that, that'll be just fine also. Okay, so I've got four of you. I've got Alessia, I've got Elias, I got Life and Ethan, and I got a couple others joining me. So let me know who you are when you're here. Just give me a quick hello so I know who I've got. We'll be starting up real soon here.
Now I'm down to six, so someone must have been on the wrong one. I've got Alex. Hey, Alex. Okay, as others join us, I'm gonna just interrupt myself and check them off. So each of you that are here will get some participation points. And I'll be asking you questions too, individually. So try and respond and type something. If you don't know, just tell me you don't know. That's okay too. Okay, I see someone else who joined us and then left. Yeah, do we need other materials then? The, no, the periodic table is fine. Just some paper to take some notes on. Uh, like usual class, okay, so paper for notes, but that's it other than your periodic table. Okay, then let's go ahead and begin. Oh, Tara's here as well. Hi, Tara. Super. Okay, um, let's go ahead and begin. So, the last time I saw you would seem like a long time ago, uh, other than the ski trip, <laughs> which was uh, which was great fun. I'm glad you got at least a week. All right, let's uh, let's review a Bohr model. Okay, so let's take sodium, everybody. So I've got sodium Na, and it's number eleven. So can you find it on your periodic table? And what's in the What's in the center of the atom? What do we start out with? So how about uh, Elias? What's in the middle of an atom? What do I kind of put put there in the middle? Elias. Nucleus is right. Thanks, Elias. So I'm going to start with that. And it's got a bunch of protons and neutrons. For now, I'm just going to write nucleus. I know this is review, okay? Um, how do I arrange the, okay, what's, what's around the nucleus? So uh, how about Alessia? What's around the nucleus on the outside of the atom? Electrons, thank you, Alessia. Now let's talk about how to arrange them. I know I've used the word shells before, and I've talked about this with some of the advanced placement teachers around the world, and all of us are gonna start using a better phrase, which is energy level. So we're gonna arrange them by energy levels. So how many are in the first, how about Alex? How many are in the first energy level close to the nucleus? Two is right. So I'm going to make a little circle for the energy level. I'm going to put a couple of electrons in there. Yes, I know this is review. We're just warming up. Okay, how about from there? And thanks, Ethan has a two. <clears throat> um, life, how many are in the next energy level? So I got two, then how many are in the next one, life? I'll go ahead and draw that here. Uh, more than four. Okay, uh, help them out. How about uh, Tara? How many in the next energy level? Eight. Thank you, Tara. So um, I'm going to draw eight more here. However, because it's, how about Ethan? Because it's sodium, it doesn't have 10. It's got how many total electrons, Ethan? Uh, 
Uh, Ethan, how many total electrons does sodium have? Eleven, thank you. Okay, so I got two plus eight. I need one more, so there it is. So there's one on its outer shell. And that's kind of where we're going to begin today, okay, folks? So the scoop is, um, let's start to review the families on the periodic table. Okay, now. I'm going to pull my periodic table closer and I'm going to show you what I wrote. And if you have a periodic table that's made of paper, you can write this too. Okay? Here we go. I'll put this back in just a second. But let's have a quick look. Okay, so the first family I wrote here AM. AM. And that's kind of short for what family, A-M. Let's see if somebody remembers. So I'm talking about this. Oh, I should call it the scientific name, this group. So this vertical group, the first one is A-M. And what is the name of that, somebody? I wrote A-M for short. We're going to write all their properties very soon. So if you don't know, you'll find out again, okay? Um, Alex says alkali somethings. Yes, alkali what? Hint, it's all on this part of the periodic table. So they're the alkali. <laughs> yes, Alessia has it, the alkali metals. So we're going to do them first. That's why I picked ta -da -da -da, sodium for our warm up problem. So I picked an alkali metal for that reason. Okay, let's go on though. The next one I put here is AE. Whoops, there you can see it. Second, second group. So these puppies right here, okay? AE stands for what? Somebody else. AE is what's the name of that second group here? From BE on down. Ethan, uh, the, the video is freezing up. Oh, I'm sorry, Ethan. I hope, is anyone else having that problem? If so, let me know. Hopefully not. Okay, so the second group, I'm looking for a name there. I wrote AE, and that's the shorthand for that. AE. Life has it just about alkali earth. It's it's alkaline earth, exactly right. So Alessia has completed it there, but both good. Should we write this on the periodic table? We weren't supposed to write on. Okay, Tara has a good question. Should you write this on your periodic table? By gosh, yes. Why not? I don't even know if I'm going to see you again before the end of the school year. So by golly, just write it on there. It'll help you remember. So go ahead and do if you got your paper one, AM and AE. Okay, all these middle puppies are just, we call them the transition metals. We're not going to worry about it much for eighth grade. We're going to jump over to this side. Boop, and I wrote NG on this top of this group. So now I'm at this side. And these suckers here, this last one on the periodic table, NG stands for the he 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 he. So someone can help me out. What's the last family called? The he 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 he. And uh, yes, you may color your periodic table, uh, Alessia. That's just fine, too. Okay, still looking for the name of these puppies. And Elias, thank you, sir. They are indeed the noble gases. And again, we're going to put there all their properties of each one today. That's how we're going to review. Great. Then I got a, next to that is this. It says a little H. And it doesn't stand for hydrogen. It stands for the name of this group that goes down from fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and so on. So what's these guys called? It starts with an H. 
looking for that name for that group. From fluorine on down, these guys. Life has it, super life. They are called the halogens, right? Oh, in German, it's the same, by the way, halogenin, or just about the same. Okay, let's look at some other ones. Um, good, lots of you had it. Super, well done. Some of the other names are less well-defined, okay? So I'll just tell you what I call these groups. Okay, next to it, I'm gonna just call these for their top member. So this one going down with O at the top, I just call the oxygen group. Next one, nitrogen at the top, I call that the nitrogen group, the carbon group, and the boron group. Okay, so that's how we're gonna do it. All right, let's put this on the corner of my overhead. Shaboom. And I'm going to erase our, erase our Bohr model. And I'm glad you guys remember how to do that. Um, and Alex has a question. Does the, bor does the boron model consist only of boron? No, nah, it goes down. But the boron family, as we'll see, Alex, is kind of a pain in the neck because boron's a a non-metal, and then aluminum and the others below it are all metals. So it's not a family that has a lot of <clears throat> consistent properties, except that they got the same number of electrons in their outer shell, which we'll talk about. Okay, away we go, shall we? So here we go. I'm going to, for each of these, I'm going to use my little cheat sheet here. For each of these, I'm going to just start and... Um, Alex asks, so a family can have different properties. Yes, especially the ones that have Alex metals and non-metals in it. But let's start with an easy one. Let's start with the alkali metals. Okay, for the alkali metals, uh, let me ask you, do any of you remember a property of that family, including sodium, the one that we did that we did as a Bohr model right at the beginning? Any properties of alkali metals that you know? And it's two words. I'm getting a little sloppy. Two words, alkali metals. Uh, and Alessia writes malleable. So yes, she's right. It's a metal. So metals are malleable. Like this piece of right here. Look at that. Malleable, fancy name for bendable. Can you guess what I'm holding just for grins? What is that? Hint, it's got a very typical color. It's not an alkaline metal, but yeah, we should write all this down, Ethan. It's good. Um, what stuff is it? And then I'll catch up with other properties people are giving. Oh, good. Everybody's giving all sorts of stuff. Good. Okay. Yes, it's copper. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't have any... Uh, of the alkali metals because they're very reactive, which is what Elias said. So, they're so reactive, we really can't have them for teachers in, 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 um, in Germany. Okay, and I see that uh, Solomon is here. So thanks for checking in, Solomon. I'm going to check you off here. That's great. And another property is from Tara. She says they are shiny, as metals are. So I got malleable, I got very reactive, I got shiny. And I've changed the colors to one that's a little bit brighter. 
Let's see if you've listed anything else. Hey, Elias has a great one. Okay. They have one electron in their outer energy level. Well done, Elias. And that turns out to be super important. So I'm going to list that. I have one electron in the outer energy level. Can you see that? I guess you can if I lean back. They have one electron on the outer energy level. Um, and Solomon asked if they are reflective. Uh, not necessarily. I think shiny is a better word for the surface of them, right? So there's that. And there's, well, there's my laptop, which looks shiny too and has metal in it. Uh, that's probably the best way. Okay, I got some other comments. From Alex, doesn't that go with shiny Alessia? Uh, shiny, yeah, shiny, yeah, okay, right. Yeah, so shiny, yeah, I think it probably does. Okay, um, let's continue on. Reacts to HC, I think Ethan, you might mean reacts with HCl, which is an acid, and you're right, although, Right. I think it does react with HCl. I'm not going to put that necessarily because that's more of a ninth grade topic. You're going to study acids next year uh, in ninth grade chemistry. They have a low electronegativity and ionization energy. Hey, Elias, you are on your game. Okay, that's cool. Uh, we're going we're gonna to come back to uh, electronegativity and ionization energy later once we work through some family qualities. But rest assured, Elias, we're on our way to that because I'm going to review the trendy sheet with you here in a little while if we get that far. Okay, so that's one other thing I'd like to add. Oh, actually, Tara has one. And that's the, they're conductive. So they conduct. Well, what's that mean? They don't conduct orchestras. They conduct he and he, he, he. What are the two things that metals conduct, including copper, but also the alkali metals, the first group as well? So they conduct he and he, he, he. So let me know if you know either one of the things that they conduct. And Solomon has it, and so does Alessia, heat and electricity dynamite. Okay, so. Super. Good. Well done, everybody. Appreciate you uh, jumping in with, uh, with uh, names there, with uh, answers. Okay. One last property, which I'm going to write here, and I hope you can see it. I'll try and put it. I may have to raise that up a bit. They have high... M, P, and B, P. What the heck are M, P, and B, P? Let me put that over here. M, P is the melting point. And we're talking about we're talking about a temperature. Right? Like ice melts at zero Celsius. That's its melting point. Okay. BP is probably standing for the <laughs> point. BP is going to be the <laughs> point. And Close, not blowing point. <laughs> so, boiling. Thank you, Solomon.
And again, that refers to a temperature, okay? Let me read what, uh, what people are saying. Ethan says, Albert couldn't be here. He's getting teeth pulled. I know, Albert wrote me. So good luck to him, poor fella. Yeah, thank you, Ethan. Okay, um, let's go on. Let's give some, uh, let's get some properties of the second family. Any questions about the first family first? We're gonna come back to um, Elias's ideas later with, uh, with um, electronegativity and, and so on, ionization energy. Okay. Nope, okay, good. So there we go. Let's erase this and put our next family up here. Here we go. And the next one, uh, our second second group is the alkaline earths. The alkaline earths. Super. Okay, so. Um, how about to you? Do you know some qualities of that second group, the alkaline earths? We're talking from ber beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, and radium. Um, Solomon, it says low densities. Um, yeah, although I don't know if that's true throughout, especially if we're going to get down to barium um, and shiny. Two valence electrons. Good. Okay, so here we go. Um, let's list some of those. So um, like the other metals, they are shiny. They conduct well. And there, I think Tara gave us this before, malleable. So those are a lot of the metal qualities that we still have. Shiny, conduct well, and malleable. Uh, low melting and boiling point. Good, Tara. Yeah, um, we'll see why that is, or you may get to some of that in ninth grade if I don't get to it. But yeah, they definitely have pretty low melting and boiling point. And from Alex, they've got two outer electrons. And he gave us the name of that. Whoops, I forgot my R. Two outer electrons. And the name of that is valence, valence electrons. So from now on, maybe I'll use that term. The outer ones and the outer energy level are called valence electrons. Huge. Okay, um, Elias says they're very reactive. Yes, they're not as reactive as the first family, but they're also still quite re re reactive. So still quite reactive. And yes, 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 yes. That's pretty much all I got on my list. And high boiling and melting points. We've got that. Did I write low? Let me think about this for a second. I think I wrote something wrong. Um, it should be relatively high melting and boiling points. So look back on your notes and let's erase that. I put the wrong word there. So they're pretty high as well. Sorry about that. So high melting and boiling points. 
And that's important because it's going to contrast with our next group ba -da -ba -da, at the end of the periodic table. Okay, so um, good. If we're okay here, we're going to go to the very last group, these puppies right at the end. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, you can remind me of what they are in a second. Let me erase the board if you guys are good with that. If you're not, if you miss anything, you can look at the video later. It will be on forever. Well, for a long time. Okay, so here we go. Bum, 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 bum. Hope we've caught up. And okay, here we go. Are we doing on time? We're doing okay. Good, let's go to the noble gases. One property you ought to be able to guess right away. And uh, yeah, so the noble gases, exactly. That's it, Solomon. So um, Alex has something already. Um, colorless, odorless, and tasteless. Well, they're gases, so you can't taste them very well. That's true. And far as I know, they're odorless. I don't really know about that. Um, they're, they have color, uh, some of them. So I, I don't want to necessarily say colorless. Ooh, I got one from Life that's kind of cool, though. They're non-flammable under standard conditions. Yeah, they do, I, I can't light them on fire like I can methane from the kitchen. That's exactly right, uh, Life. So let's make it in a general way. Let's just say these guys, they don't react much. So they're very non-reactive. Including burning, they don't burn. Okay, uh, Ethan says it contains helium. Yes, that's one of the group members. Um, Let's just say that they're all gases. And if they're gases, gang, their melting and boiling points would be what? High or low? Yes, exactly, Elias. They're the least active um, elements, uh, reactive. Ooh, and that's a good one. Good. And from, um, I think that's Solomon. High is the answer. So they have high. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. Think about it. Yeah, better be low. Yeah, yes, Tara. So they have low melting and boiling points. If you think about it, a lot of them are like negative temperature Celsius, okay? So they are really super low. Like helium might be around negative 200 something for its uh, boiling point. It's really, really low. It becomes a gas easily, as do many of them. Okay, back up to um, Ethan has a really super one, and he says they've got full... electron energy levels. That is so important. So full electron energy levels. Um, and Ethan also says they're used in lamps. Yeah, they're still used in advertising. I had a, an acquaintance out in Montana and his job was he took glass and he would fill the glass like tubes with different gases. He'd fill them with helium or krypton or whatever to give different colors when you zap them with electricity, which I'm sorry, that's a demo I can't do, but maybe they'll do that with you next year. Okay, what does that mean? All the energy levels are filled. Okay, by energy levels, I'm using that term now instead of shells. So all the, the the, what we used to call shells, let's call them energy levels. They're full of electrons. So the first one we did with uh, with sodium had two electrons, so it's full. The next one with sodium was full. It has eight electrons. 
However, with sodium, we had another one that wasn't full, okay? But for all these suckers, like for helium, it's got two and it's completely full. Neon has 10, so two plus eight, completely full. Argon, 288, eight, altogether makes 18. Two plus eight plus eight makes 18. So its energy shells, uh, energy levels are full. That's what I mean. Okay, so question from uh, Solomon. Is it impossible for noble gases to lose electrons? It's not impossible, Solomon, but it doesn't happen much. So a quality we can say is they make very few compounds. To make compounds, they'd have to lose or gain electrons. So make very few compounds. They're just too good to play with others, right? That's how they got their name, the noble gases, right? The edel, edelgassen in German, right? They're too, they're too good to, to be with others, right? So they don't really play. They don't make a lot of compounds with other elements, okay? They make a few, but not really many. Okay, let me look at stable and non-reactive. Ethan, that's a good way to say it. I like that. Stable. Let's say they're stable alone. You guys are really good. You know a lot about that family. Let me see what I wrote down. Yep, 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 yep. We got the ones I was thinking of. Anything else you guys thought of that I missed? Stable elements. Yeah, stable elements. That's probably a good way to say it, Ethan. Stable elements. How are we doing on time? We still got a few minutes, so let's go on. Okay, uh, if we're good there, let's say we've got the noble gases. All I wrote under here is elements, but stable elements, don't worry about that. Okay, let's erase and get started on our next family with our last few minutes, which starts with an H, starts with an H. It's a family that's almost greeting you. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, what family starts with an H? The <laughs> family. Hurry before I write it. My hand's getting itchy. Yes, 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 all at once. Good job. So we're talking about the halogen family. Or group, I should say, the halogen uh, group. Oh, I got a new person here. Anybody else that I didn't know was here? I got Andy's here now, and she knew the halogen. So uh, let me write down Ms. Mancellas here. I've got Alessia here, Alex. I got Solomon. I got Tara, Andy. I've got Elias. I got Life, and I got Ethan. Anybody else out there that I hadn't written down if not then if there is let me know let me know okay so as we're doing that so uh life has it good job life they're very reactive we'll see who they react with a little bit this year and a bunch next year Okay, and then Elias, uh, oh, I got a lot of things. Low melting and boiling points, says Ethan. Um, yeah, a lot of them are gases, so low melting points and boiling points. Good, Ethan. And then from Elias, the halogens are very reactive with the noble gases. Um, no, the halogen, the, the noble gases are not really reactive with anybody, okay? so. Um, yeah, seven valence electrons, right. So with seven, well, I gotta be careful about that. Let's put it this way. They don't all have seven, like, uh, well, no, take it back, they do. With seven valence electrons, 
This family, they all, all the members of the family try and gain one electron. So they have a full shell of eight. So with seven valence electrons, they try to gain one electron. And that's one reason life really was correct at the beginning. They're very reactive because, boy, they, they, they really want that last electron. And we're quickly getting to the end of our hour. Let's see how we're doing. Oh, I got a big one. Any other qualities you can think of? This is a really important one for the halogens. Any other halogen qualities you know? One that no one said yet. Something they all have in common, all of these puppies. F, C, L, B, R, I. The last one we don't worry about much. Non-conductive, yeah, that'll work. Yeah, okay, we could say that, Solomon. Don't conduct. Well, or non-conductive is just fine. That's good. We could say that about the noble gases too, if you wanna to add that to the noble gases, they don't conduct electricity either. But certainly these don't, that's a good one. Um, no, the last one I was thinking of, here's my hint, Brinkelhoff, Brinkelhoff. Uh, Andy says, can be in all states of matter. That's kind of true. There's some that are gas, some are liquid, and some are, uh, one is a liquid and the rest are solids. That's true. I didn't think about that, Andy. Um, it's the only family that is that way. It's not necessarily quality, but it's an inter interesting fact. Um, they're liquids, they're not all liquids. Brittle, no, no. Brinkelhoff, they're all diatomic. As elements. That's really important. So you need to remember these suckers are like this. We got what, F2? C L two I two B R two. You can be happy too. Okay. Uh, lots and lots of diatomic ones. Remember the Brinkelhoff will help you remember that, right? So Brinkelhoff. Those are all the ones that come in twos on the periodic table, by the way, the Brinkelhoffs. Okay, anything else I needed to remind us of for the halogens? They're reactive, they gain one electron, diatomic, low melting and boiling points. That sounds very cool, good. Let's go to the oxygen family. Questions or any comments from you? They're not really brittle. They're not all liquid. So, and Ethan, the electronegativity, we'll talk about another hour. I want to review that with you anyway. Okie dokie. And let's go to the family that is next to these guys, the oxygen family. Or I should say group. Group's a little more scientific. So the oxygen group. Um, this one you may kind of not realize. Well, let's see. If you know anything about the oxygen group, let me know. They vary a bit. So I'm going to write here oxygen. Very reactive. Oxygen, very reactive, others less so. So I'm sorry they vary within the family. Tara says they're dull. 
or is the or or is the video dull? Well, I hope not. But anyway, um, ah, I see. Gotcha. Okay, um, they're dull. Well, they vary. Okay, like oxygen's a gas, sulfur's a a solid, a yellow solid, but their 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 state of matter varies, and they're not all dull. They're certainly all they're, they're pretty much mostly non-metals. So non-conductors. How about the number of their electrons? Ooh, I know we gotta go, we're about out of time, but before we go, um, they tend to have, let's just say need two electrons more or more or full energy level. And that is about our time there. In fact, I took a minute more of your time. So I'm going to say goodbye to you. I'll give another date for when we're going to meet next week. And uh, probably give some other assignment to you. I'll see what we're doing on assignments right now. I hope you're all well. And uh, yeah, thank you for joining me. And we'll participate more next week. Bye.